on UEFA Super? Two, two Super Cups. Two. Uh, UEFA Cup, Champions League. Do you count Charity Shields? I don't ever know. Count them. They fucking do now, don't they? The lost penny Big thanks to one of our supporters. It's Kingfisher Carpets and Artificial Grass. It's open now at Kingfisher Business Park in Bootle, Liverpool's newest carpet and artificial grass showroom. They've got a website, of course they have. It's kingfisher-carpets.co.uk and on Instagram, it's kingfisher.carpets. It's still summertime. Why not get yourself some artificial grass for the front lawn there? Really low maintenance. And make the garden look spick and span. Be the talk of the town. Get in touch with Kingfisher Carpets and Artificial Grass. Okay, welcome back to the Scouse House podcast. And I am so excited today because what a guest we have got. A man sat in front of me who literally needs no introduction. <laughs> <laughs> It's Jamie Carragher, everybody. Yeah, I think the laugh gave it away. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's Jamie Carragher in the studio. I will give him an introduction, though. 737 appearances for Liverpool, three Player of the Season awards, three League Cups, two FA Cups, two UEFA Super Cups, and who could forget? One UEFA Champions League, all time record appearance holder in Europe for Liverpool FC. Jamie, you finished playing 10 years ago. Just, just this last week gone. Does it feel, does it feel like that that long ago that career? <sighs> no, it's flew by. But I think you always say that at the end, don't you? You know, people always say your school years fly, but they don't say that when it's it's half one in geography on a Wednesday <laughs> afternoon. You think, fucking get me out of here. Uh, <laughs> but no, after the ten years, yeah, I, I can say it's gone quickly. But it does feel like a long time ago that I was playing. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't say I've missed it massively. I mean, I missed the big games, and they got I'd love to have played in that game, but. I'm I'm quite proud of the fact that I've I've just cracked on, you know, and I don't sort of look back too much. It's nice to talk about, you know, old games and things, but I just love uh, and get excited about what I'm going to do going forward. You've done lots of things going forward in that 10 years um, since, and we'll definitely get into some conversation about that, but let's start at the beginning. Let's remind anyone that doesn't know where JB Carragher is from in Liverpool. Where, whereabouts, mate? Bootle, uh, yeah, that'll... Uh, Never change, obviously. <laughs> uh, but no, I live in Crosby now, so I moved out to Bootle about probably 20 years ago, in my early 20s, moved out to my mum's. But my mum's still in the same house that I can remember where I was I was, I was, was in all my life on uh, Nosey Road. And uh, my mum's still there, she'll never move. I mean, initially we were in a house just off Marsh Lane and, uh, in Beach Street. I think till I was two or three or something like that, but I, I can't remember that. So we've always been in that in that beautiful area. That's where my mum and dad grew up. And uh, my mum's never moved, never will. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'll end up living in, you know, Crosby, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 years really, but whenever I get asked that question, it'll always be beautiful. It'll always be beautiful. And, 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 and now you've got the freedom of Sefton. I believe it's part of your uh, Champions League heroics. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's lovely to have. It's nice. Thanks very much. What does it get you? It doesn't pay the parking fines. <laughs> it, I mean, I've never seen more traffic wardens in, in anywhere in, than in Crosby in my life. It, I mean, it's off the scale. Well, you uh, can park outside, man, if you want me. Yeah, that, yeah, that'll do me. I'd love just somewhere to park where I wouldn't have to be running out when I'm just having a little bite to eat and I've got to run out there and have an argument with a traffic warden. Yeah. And he's saying he's already done it when he hasn't. Chef the council, <laughs> just listen to the man. He's got the freedom of the place. Cancel the fans. Um, okay, Jamie, we, we, we know Bootle then, and I think a lot of people uh, knew that you're synonymous with, with Bootle, and, and, and obviously Liverpool, and on the Scouse House podcast, we're talking to people from Liverpool, Merseyside, or people who've moved to the city and the connection there, and I don't think there's uh, any more higher-profile player, really, in, in terms of uh, Bootle, certainly, as a place in Liverpool than, than yourself. I wanted to ask you, sort of, um, when you were growing up, 
playing football down in your local youth club, the, the Brunswick, and that's where you first start and cutting your teeth as a as a player. Yeah, I mean that the Brunies been there since the sixties. So my, my dad tells me he was he actually went in as a kid the first day it opened or the, or the first night it was open. So there's a big tradition of us as a family using uh, the Bruny. So it's still going strong now. We we have a a big part still to play in it in terms of I wouldn't say keeping it running but helping out with different things that we can do. But yeah, it's the, the, there's two memories I have as when when you talk about the first time you kicked the ball, the two memories that really stand out for me. One of them is in the Bruny basically, and uh, me standing at the side of the gym and my dad asking lads who were probably about four or five years older whether I could I could play and join in. And I can still remember my dad asking and them saying, yeah, I'm probably thinking, oh, you know, a young kid playing with us. You know, because we're all like that, aren't you? You know, they're a bit too old, knocking me about and not as good as them. So I can just remember, uh, yeah, going on the uh, in the gym in the Brunny. Well, funny enough, I remember your lad playing in the Brunny as well in in like the one of the men's games uh, an yeah. I mean, evening. So yeah, these things come. Yeah, you got to sort you out, don't it? Come full circle, don't yeah. they? Yeah, and you do. I actually remember. You may uh, may remember this game. Uh, we played a couple of times in the in the Brunswick. Really intense. But some of the most intense five seven <laughs> matches you'll have ever seen. It's two, two goals or five minutes. Roll on, roll off. They're the rules, aren't they? And I know yeah. there was a game when you turned up, uh, and also your brother John. Turned up, and I I got the sense, and I don't know if you you felt this too, but sometimes say if you rocked up, people would just raise their raise games, the game, yeah. right? But then I thought because John was there, you raised your game as a sort of a sibling <laughs> rivalry type thing. <laughs> Honest to God, it was it wasn't a friendly kick about that game. No, 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 no. It's it's quite aggressive. I had to stop playing five aside. I get too wound up. Yeah. So was someone, as I said, uh, you know. People waste time in five a side. <laughs> Honest to God. You go for five a side to have a sweat on. And then someone goes one there up front and they start just passing it back to the keeper. I'm like, what the fucking hell's going on here? And yeah, I say, oh, fuck this, I'm off. Yeah. Well, you thought you called my dad Tony Pulis. He's uh, the ringer, isn't he? So it must have been him. Yeah, it must have been him, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For, for long throws. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. laugh that, yeah. Like and subscribe to the Scouse House. Do it now. We, 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 we talked about, we talked about the, the, the Brunswick there, but obviously as well, when you're growing up, obviously school must have been a, a big part of your, of your, you know, playing sports, certainly in football with the school and, and youth teams and stuff like that. Just just for anyone that doesn't know, which schools did you, did you go to? Uh, St. James, which is over the road from the Brunny uh, on Marsh Lane. So went there, uh, obviously that, that's me, me other time I can remember playing football for the first time was at the school. It was in a, I think we would have been seven. And uh, the teacher, the first time he must have played as a class, we didn't have a game. We just had like, there's a goalie and then the rest of us just play. And the year above us were playing like a, like a, an eight aside on the next pitch. So the teacher was keeping an eye on both games. He was, he was watching their game, refereeing it, and then coming over to us every 10 minutes, just making sure no one was fighting, yeah. <laughs> basically. Uh, and then I just remember him coming over, and he just said to me, uh, you, you can come on the next, this other pitch. So I did, straight away, I just got moved onto this other pitch to play with the year above. And that's, that's sort of a vivid memory along with the, uh, the Bruni. So that was St. James's. Uh, the headmaster was a guy called uh, Mr. Rourke, but obviously John Rourke sadly passed away, but he was a massive Evertonian. And uh, he used to go to the game, uh, as I did as a kid. So I used to always sort of, it was like a big thing to bump into your, your head teacher at the match. It was like, oh my God, there's, there's Mr. Rourke. Uh, so he, he'd be at the game. So he was a big football fan. So it was always... You didn't you didn't see teachers as real people outside? No, exactly, you didn't, did you? You're just thinking, oh God, no. But uh, it'd be like a big thing, running back, telling your dad. Oh, my dad, yeah. Mr. Hawk's over there. You know, as if he's like this, like, godlike figure, you know what I mean? I'm going to see him Monday morning. <laughs> but, uh, but no, so what, that, that told you that, you know, football was going to play a big part, certainly in the school, because of the head teacher that we had. And then, uh, was that, that was senior school? or No, know? that was junior yeah. school. And then we went to uh, Savio, formerly Silesia, when it was all boys, Savio, and the, obviously the girls came. And uh, I was I was only there for three years before I went to Lily Shaw. So the majority of my school life, when I remember school, I would say St. James, which was, I don't know, what is it, four till 11, seven, seven or eight years. So, and then three years at uh, at Savio. I mean, again, another teacher who was still keeping contact with now, Mr. Dickinson, he, he was a, from a, a football background. He was a physio and he was the physio for England school boys. And they used to play games live on TV. So once a year, We'd see our school teacher running on with like the the the, the booker and uh, 
the, the sponge and uh, so that made him a little bit a bit of a someone if you like so uh, he played a big part in me and my football sort of development in the secondary school as well you mentioned a moment ago Lily Shaw um, and for people that don't know what, what was Lily Shaw and how did it come about just a football school really uh, for the best 16 kids in the country at a certain age when you were 14 your last two years of school you basically moved away from home and you would be in with a group of 16 of your age and there'd be a year above you who was 16. So it was 32 lads basically living in some dorm and training every night, going to a local school and representing England. And then the following year, I'd be, we'd be the seniors and then another group would come underneath us. So it was a brilliant two years. Uh, still keep in contact now. We're on a group chat. The... Uh, the real class of 92, because that was the year that we went, <laughs> 92 to 94. So we had, a, we had a night out. So that was the 25-year reunion. We, they all come to Liverpool. And uh, we had a couple of nights. Yeah, I mean, they all stayed in the hotel. I didn't. And i just meet them for a couple of nights. And uh, after the first night, I've gone home. And then we met up again in the afternoon for the, for the next night. We went to Bongo's Bingo. <laughs> and... Uh, Next thing I turn up the next night, fucking one lad with a black eye. Another fella, honest to God, fucking mouth all over the place. What happened there? So we got fucked on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Must have bumped into your mates. Yeah. Um, listen, Jamie, so you've told Lily Shaw there and, uh, and, and some of the people, but that must have been the first time that you've moved away from, from Liverpool and, and your family. Any trepidation about doing that at the time? No. I mean, it's, it's the first time I've ever done it. You know, when I was lucky in my professional career, never had to move. At all, but uh, no, I couldn't wait to go. Not against my parents, like, but uh, no, it was just that excitement of wow, I'm, I'm seen as one of the best players in the country. Because at that age, you don't know if you're going to fully make it. We all believe we are, but you don't know players how good they are around the country. And uh, you had that thing of playing every night with the best players in the country. I was just, oh, I used to have my head on football. It wasn't about going there and school wise or nothing like that, or how it's going to affect me education wise, leaving me school. It was all about. You know, you know, I'm playing with the best players in England every day. And 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 do you think they like, sort of touching on the Liverpool thing and the Scouser thing? Do you think there's a little bit of inherent confidence that that came with going down there and like showing showing what you could do and you know sort of not? Yeah, I think we've all got a little bit of that. Most of us, a little bit of cockiness and I don't know if, even if not if cockiness is the right word. I don't know what the right word is. It's just it's just us, isn't it? You know, we're always quite chirpy on the front foot. I I think if you had a group of people. And there was a scouser in there. The scouser, I think, would always be playing a prominent part in that group. It just, they just would. You know, that's a, a football team, a school class, or a, people put together. Me going to Lily Shaw, we're not shrinking violet, are we? You know, you'd always be heavily involved yeah. in shenanigans or whatever it was, laughing and joking, standing up for yourself, whatever it is. That's that's something that's bred into us. So I was no different at Lily Shaw. Well, one one of the things we we had you do, Jamie, before you came in, you picked mm-hmm. your, your all time scouser yes. eleven, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna throw that that graphic up so people can can see some of the picks there. Goalkeepers, I think, is always a hard one, but it's got to be Tommy Lawrence, hasn't it? Tommy Lawrence, yeah. yeah. Remember the I mean, uh, just for the interview, the interview on like, there. If anyone has Church checked, Street, it looked like it was Church Street to me. If has, anyone hasn't checked that interview out, what was the, the reporter was asking someone if they remembered the time in 1965 when Liverpool won the FA Cup, and he asked a, an old gent in Liverpool yeah. City Centre, did, did "Does he remember? It? It? I played in it." <laughs> <laughs> Tommy well, Lawrence is brilliant. in goalkeeper number one. You must have played by the way with some some mad goalies. He was the best goalie you played with. Pepe Reina was the best one I played with. That was when we were at our best. I think under Rafa Benitez, and uh, he could have played today. I mean, he still is playing today, but he could have. What he was doing then would transfer into playing today. He could brilliant with his feet. Yeah, so he'd have been absolutely fine playing for you know Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool right now. Great stuff. Stick with uh, the Merseyside team. Right back, I will go for Trent Alexander Arnold. Uh, he's He's probably not even halfway through his career, but he's, he's won everything already. He's, he's the scouts in the team. The scouts well, actually, the there's a few in this one, but, but you know, you get the point. <laughs> um, well, you asked me, should I put myself in? Did I? Well, yeah, you, you, you encouraged me to, <laughs> shall we say. So I thought, fuck it, I'm going in. <laughs> uh, I think you deserve a place in that team, Jamie. Yeah. So I've put myself in. I've put myself. Did, did, did you have to put yourself as captain though? I don't think I mentioned. <laughs> oh no, I think uh, I think someone in midfield might okay. be captain of All right team. then. So yeah, so I'm in, and then I had a toss up between uh, 
Phil Thompson and Tommy Smith. I'm going to go for Phil Thompson. Obviously, worked together when he was uh, he was a coach at the club, lifted the European Cup as a local lad. So pretty special. Uh, left back, I'm going to go with Leighton Baines. Everton. I think, yeah, I think one of the best uh, left backs the Premier League seen. You look at the goals he scored, penalties, free kicks, assists as well. He was a brilliant part of that Moyes, uh, David Moyes team. I'm going to start from right midfield. I'm going to go Ian Callaghan, who was uh, the record appearance uh, maker for Liverpool ahead of himself. He's won every trophy, starting the second division with Liverpool, ended up winning the European Cup. So he's got to go in and a lovely fella. Steven Gerrard, I think the greatest player to ever play for Liverpool. And I would say the greatest player to play in this team. I would say someone, someone may be debating that when I get to the strikers. Has he got the armband, by the way? Is he Steven Gerrard's capitano. Yes, he's in. Next to him is Peter Reid, another heightened fella, same as Stevie. I watched him growing up as an, uh, as an Everton fan. He was uh, a mainstay of that Everton team that won two titles. He got PFA Player of the Year in 1985, so he goes in. On the left, I'm going to put Steve McManaman, who was a great player for Liverpool in the uh, in the the start of the Premier League. Right, you know he was. He was one of the best players in the Premier League. The, the, be, the best players in the world, more often than not, go to Real Madrid and Barcelona. Stevie went on a, a Bosman. I think he was the, one of the first Bosman. So I think it was a little bit of ill feeling, I would say, I think from Liverpool supporters, which I thought was a little bit unfair. Because I think in some ways you can accept, or certainly I could as a Liverpool player, when I saw players leaving the club, if it was going to Real Madrid or Barcelona, you could almost go, I get it. I understand it. it, it whatever you say about the Premier League right now, it's the biggest league or the best league. For a lot of footballers, and not just foreign players, even players in this country, the pinnacle is playing for a Barcelona or a Real Madrid. You know, those teams, historic clubs. So, and to go there and win two European Cups, I mean, it's pretty special. You know, a lad, you know, a local lad. So, mm. as I said, uh, great admiration for him. So, Mac is in. And then it's uh, Wayne Rooney's got to go in, of course. Wazza. Uh, yeah, Wazza. Did you and ever the, call him that? Is, is no. That, no. No. Just a tabloid nickname, is that? Yeah, I mean, I think a few. I think that was his nickname at Man United and stuff like that. But I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't call. We, him we, we were talking about street footballers before. Is he yeah. the? Is he the epitome yeah. of a street footballer? I, football? I would think so. Yeah, I think there's a there's an uh, an interview from David Moyes where he said even when he was in the first team, he'd, he'd get reports that he was he, after games he'd be going home and playing football in the streets. <laughs> yeah. But he was still only sixteen, wasn't he? When he was uh, when he was in the Everton first team. I mean. Yeah, as I said, I, I've, I've said Steve, he's the best player in this team. But listen, you could, it's a toss of a coin. I mean, to have two players of that quality come out of this city is pretty special. I mean, for, for me, they're, they're the two best English players, I, I don't know, for the last 30, 40 years. When, when you heard about this guy Rooney coming through at Everton, obviously you're playing, presumably at Liverpool, and you talked before about rumours around football. Were, were you hearing this guy's going to be special and did we a little bit... Oh, I wish he'd have come on the other side of the park. Uh, well, to be honest, uh, I did his name a little bit, but he introduced himself to me, and this was in a nightclub in the state on the in the state, the state nightclub. He must have been about twenty. He's probably only been about fourteen. Okay. <laughs> and pretty, pretty looked about forty. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, he come up to me. Yeah. What did he say? I can't. I mean, he was he's quite funny. He was. Uh, I'm Rooney. You know, I'm Rooney. You know, it's like, uh, watch out for me or something. I don't know exactly what it was along them lines, but it, it was like, he was just being his typical mischievous self, uh, Wayne. But he was a typical scouser on the front foot, fancied himself. And why not when you've got ability like that? Exactly. And then? It's got to be Robbie Fowler, hasn't it? Uh, you know, when the, you know, what his nickname was God. But the Liverpool fans think still is. And uh, you, you because that team of Stevie Mack and Robbie didn't go on to win a league title or a European Cup, maybe not remembered as, as good as they should be, or in terms of the team that they played in. Because the team was a very, was a you know, it was a great team. Some of the football that they played in, McManaman and Fowler combined, and was absolutely fantastic. You think of what Robbie did in those first three or four years at Liverpool, uh, and it was just sometimes it's all about time. And you know, you see this team now, and obviously they've won the league, but. You can't tell me that the front three, you know, in the pomp were better than Robbie Fowler. Yeah, I'm not saying Robbie was better than them, but it's like 
Robbie could have played in that. So if he'd have been there when Jürgen Klopp was there, I don't even think of that myself or Stevie or different players. You know, sometimes it's about being in the right place at the right time. Mm. And, you know, I, I could argue I was in the right place at the right time and I played with Steven Gerrard. Yeah. You know, because without him, I don't think I'd have won the trophies I won. So sometimes, you know, you just, as I said, you're there at that moment in time when everything just aligns together. And probably Steve McManaman and Robbie were just a little bit unfortunate that, you know, that Liverpool team at that time just wasn't the Liverpool team that it became years later or was just before that. And 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 I don't want to spend too much on it, Sam, on this, but that, that um, tag of Spice <clears> Boys, <throat> was that was that unfair or was there a little bit of truth, certainly, in some of the other players in that mix, maybe not Robbie and... I, I think it was a little bit unfair because I think what these young lads were doing, and I don't think the Premier League explodes, the money explodes, you've got all those lads, lad magazines loaded and all this and... OK magazines that everything was just like at that time what was it what was it? what was the what was that era called Britpot or yeah. you know all the Oasis and it was just like everyone was doing that or whatever what that was you know going out with models or going to London nightclubs or dressing in a certain way whatever that may be Liverpool weren't any different to anyone it was just that Liverpool didn't win that's what it is and you also have to say I'm trying to defend them but Wearing the white suits was there. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Who could forget? That, I mean, it, it, it always put them in a difficult place to argue the point when they come out in those white suits, cream, to be honest. The cream the, Armani's. Yeah. yeah, but I think when you're looking at the full package of the time that team were together, played some unbelievable football, very close to winning big trophies. But as I said, it's just when you win, you can do whatever you want. When mm. you lose, that's when people start pointing the fingers. Some team that, by the way, is it not, JV? Yeah, that's beating the Mank team or the Cockney team or whatever, whatever team, yeah. Let's get all these together. And who's managing that rabble? I've gone with Joe Fagan, who only managed Liverpool for two seasons, but in his first season won a treble of uh, the League Championship, European Cup, famously in Rome on penalties against Roma. And, uh, and, and, won, <laughs> and won the Milk Cup, again. yeah, from Bootle, I think. And uh, won the Milk Cup against Everton, I think, with Graeme Souness scoring the winner at Main Road. Amazing. Yeah. Smoking Look, Joe. Why do you think there are so many good players, football players from Liverpool? I think there's two reasons. I think that the first reason is I think we have a passion for the game that is unmatched throughout the country. I really do believe that. I think every dad in the city who, you know, has a son, dreams of a son playing for Liverpool or Everton. Uh, and I don't think that'll ever change. I think both football clubs will always produce players coming through the ranks and I also think the actual character and personality of people of this city what I've just mentioned before in terms of we stand up for ourselves we believe in ourselves you know we'll always have a a, yeah, a big role in a, in a team I would say and you'll always be noticed I used to say that to my own son when he was playing make sure people notice you now, it could be your football ability, it could could be talking, it could just be loud, being aggressive, whatever it could be, make sure you make an impression on people. And I think we do that in the main, in the in the city that we're from. You know, it's a bit like, I'm going to have a good go. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm going to, you know, I'm going to die trying, you know. Yeah. You know, so we, we, we're, going to, we're going to have a good go. And I just think that personality, really. I th and I think if you was a, a football team, or so it's even like a non-league team, and you weren't from Liverpool, I'd always think, I'd want a couple of lads from Liverpool on my team. Just that personality, the grit, the mentality, just the way we are, plus the, obviously the passion for the game, I think means we'll always, you know, breed some of the best, you know, players this country has ever seen. One of the things we, we talked about before we came on was the sort of uh, lack of goalkeepers, particularly from the Liverpool area. We, we, we sort of stumbled upon that as we were talking it through. <laughs> do, do, do you have any theories on why that might be? I just think, I just think maybe are we all bullies a little bit. We just put who's the soft back? You getting goal? It's just that one, isn't it? It's not even like put a good lad in goal. It's just oh fuck off, you're going in goal. It is, isn't it? Yeah. It is, isn't it? it is. Yeah, you know. So he doesn't want to be there. He doesn't even want to play. He just wants to be with a few of the big lads, and yeah. he's just got to go and go. And he's going to get blamed if you get beat. Roy Keane quite often at the moment gets credited with the, with the line 
uh, basically that's, that's his, his job. job. Now I actually believe that it was you, Jamie Carragher, who created that. That's your job line about goalkeepers and particularly about goalkeepers flipping on on centre backs yeah. uh, for, for for letting the letting the striker get a shot off. So are you a little are you a little bit sort of harsher on goalkeepers? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, <clears> and <throat> where that came from is basically. I used to hate people saying he was a good shot stopper. And I'm like, oh my fucking God, he's a good shot stopper. I fucking hope so. <laughs> that, is like, that is like the most basic requirement of a goalkeeper. He's not good at stopping shots. <laughs> what is he doing in the goal? Talk about using his feet, communication, you know, catching, whatever. That's, that's the bait. I mean, that, you know, he's a good shot stopper. Which one isn't a good shot stopper? Every goalkeeper gets described as a good shot stopper. I think Liverpool have had a few. Uh, who might yeah, be... well, may not come into that category. <laughs> and then goalkeepers coming out, screaming, shouting when they have to make a save. It's like, yeah. I mean, could you imagine having to play in front of Jordan Pickford? <laughs> I mean, oh, I mean, I watch him now for Sky, and I'm like, honest to God, me and him would be boxing every game. Just get back in goal and shut up. <laughs> honest to God. Uh, uh, we've got Gareth the Everton fan in the studio here, uh, just keeping his counsel. Where, where is he? He's, he's out behind the screen. Do you agree with me? Um, <laughs> He's not an easy guy to play with, I'd say. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> Let's just move that back to it, just in case it's in the way. Leighton Baines, he went to Everton, of course. When, when he went there, Jamie, uh, I mean, was, is he an example of a player who you looked at from, uh, uh, from across the park there and thinking... He would have been perfect for Liverpool. Yeah, I think he was a great player, certainly for Everton. Obviously, I think he was at Everton as a youngster. Went to Wigan, did really well at Wigan, got that move. I didn't think he got in the team initially when David Moyes first brought him, but I think when you look at the numbers he got, you know, assist wise, free kicks, taking penalties, he's probably one of Everton's best players in the Premier League era, right up there, probably in the top three or four. He was as good as anything when he was at his peak in the Premier League, probably battling with Ashley Cole to be the best left back, but you know, Ashley Cole was something special. But when you actually look at Leighton Baines' numbers, I think they surpassed Ashley Cole in, in, in certain categories in terms of what he provided assist wise and goals wise. So yeah, he, he, he had to go in, definitely yeah. at, at left back. Yeah. And and we had um we had McManaman in the team, and uh, one one thing I wanted to ask you about there is he obviously moved away from Liverpool himself and took quite a you know big move to Real Madrid that worked out very very well indeed for for him in terms of certainly you know trophy success and so on. Obviously, that's not something you did. You you renowned as a, as a one club man. Um, do, do you ever like look back on like sort of, sort of uh, any, any any opportunity of what it would have been like to play abroad or or um, for another club? I mean, I think it'd be lovely now to say, oh, I played for a, a Real Madrid or you played for an AC Milan or, you know, whatever it may be. I think it'd be nice to say that, really. But nothing like that ever came up for me. Uh, I, I wasn't at the level to play for a, a Real Madrid or a Barcelona. They they take the best players in the world. They, they, they go to Liverpool. They even go to United and just go, you know, Ronaldo, we'll have him, basically. Uh, and, you know, Maka went there on a, on a Bosman. It's a brilliant one, won two Champions League trophies, played a major part in one of them, getting a goal as well. So it was a brilliant move for him. I mean, to have that as a CV, Liverpool and Real Madrid, on, on, as I said, on your CV is pretty special to the giants of European football. But but no, I, I'm, 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 I'm delighted I was a one-club man. I think that for me is pretty special. There's very few of them in the past and to be even fewer I think in the future so it's a nice little tag to have yeah and and, and up top we had we had uh, what, what a combination we had Rooney just in mm. behind one Mr Robbie Fowler um, two examples would you say of, of street footballers yeah 100% I think Robbie came into the game just just before the almost almost when the Premier League started wasn't it really yeah. I think Robbie came in then and it was just a revelation he was just unfortunate as time went moved on you know with, with he had a few injuries as well, uh, which which didn't help. But when you look at those first three or four years of Robbie Fowler, I mean, it's pretty unbelievable, actually. When we talk of some of the young players that are coming through now, we talk about the superstars. And Rooney would be one of those when he came through. Very few can match Robbie Fowler in terms of his numbers and the goals and 30 goals a season for three years, really. Uh, and as I said, it was just a little bit unfortunate with with injuries that sort of maybe scuppered him being a one-club man at Liverpool. Gerard Houllier came in and obviously things changed for him. (laughs) 
if you're Liverpool support, you're not going to go into town on a Saturday night and bump into a Liverpool player. That used to happen. <laughs> Guilty. Uh, <laughs> Do you ever come for you, Bellamy? I think we had a couple of little ones, a little bit of banter. 